Hi, good morning, guys. Um, sorry we missed our class on Monday, um, but I just quickly want to run through the few items. We're looking at um, Unit 2 still, so uh, we've done uh, Chapters 5, 6 uh, last week. So this week we're just going to look at Chapter 7 and 8. So it's not a lot of work. Um, it's um, Seven isn't that important uh, for me, but I still want you guys to read through it. Chapter eight is still is um, quite an important um, chapter, um, and quite a bit of items that you need to list uh, for me in that. So, um, <clears throat> but luckily these um, chapters are still very much um, theory, and um, if you read through it, um, I think you guys will have ample information to actually do your discussions um, in the exam and in the um, task. Okay, so just starting out um, on this chapter, you will see um, chapter 7 is all about the, and it's an introduction to the network perspective on innovation in construction. So it's all about networking and how um, innovation in networking can actually influence um, your construction site or a construction. So innovation in the construction industry, um, an industrial network perspective on innovation. So that's what, what we just indicated. But understanding the innovation as a resource, interaction, uh, the interaction process between the different people. Now, um, you will see in chapter eight how this relates to to that section. So, um, firstly, the resources of com company can be divided into the products, the facilities, the organizational units, organizational re relationships. So, it's the method that um, that these um, functions communicate to, uh, to each other. Um, you, uh, one example of all these communication sets is the way that we use BIM, for instance, um, where uh, you get information from suppliers on a specific project or product that you can actually incorporate into your bill or, or not in your bill, in your, into your model. And then all the information, the looks and um, the specifications is linked to that item in your um, model that you have built so and um, that's one example of how innovation is taking communication from the suppliers to the actual contractor um, is a much more visual um, method of actually transferring information okay so the experimental examples is the picture uh, that emerges is that the companies temporarily and pragmatically adopt um, their separate resources in each and every project without actually in, inducing long-term or mutual change and of learning. So this is basically a repetition of what we've been saying um, up to thus far. So um, the preliminary conclusion of this chapter is that in this chapter we examine the implications of an industrial network perspective concerning our understanding of innovation and construction. In the construction, in construction subcontractors and suppliers often account to for 60 to 80 percent of the total cost of the project okay indicating the importance of the supply network construction companies okay and then new solutions inventions in one project are difficult to transfer to other projects when the um, when the um, constellations are ever changing okay so um, the main thing is the what this chapter just re, um, reiterates for us is that it's difficult to transfer information from one project to a new project and we um, BIM information um, promises uh, to actually assist in this process of transferring information from a one project to the next okay so um, the that's basically it that, that I want to highlight from, from this chapter, I, but I still want you guys to, to read through it. Um, I just want to see, there's a couple of items here that I just underlined. Okay, and um, 
yeah i think that's more or less it i think the three aspects that's the only thing that which i didn't uh, identified in the chapter um they talk about three aspects that follow from an industrial network perspective and use them to examine various examples of innovation in construction from ongoing research program on the innovation in swedish and norwegian construction industry this is now on page 90. um Basically, um, they looked at three aspects uh, innovation in the construction industry, industrial network perspective on innovation, and then they looked at understanding innovation as rescue interaction processes. So, um, just take note of those three headings of how they actually did their research. So, um, that's more or less um, it, I think. There's not a lot um, from this chapter to learn, but I want you guys to. Uh, to read through it. Okay, then we get to chapter 8. Now, chapter 8 is a bit of a um, combination of what we've learned now in chapter um, 7. And it's all about uh, the networks and how inf information diffuses from one project and from one company to another company. Okay, or, or in the industry. So, firms do not innovate in vacuums. Obviously, um, innovation occurs over firms, but um, <clears throat> for instance, new materials um, from products has to be marketed. Um, so you have marketers, so the, um, the supplier markets itself with um, with the architects, with construction uh, managers, and so forth. Uh, innovation range from small advances in construction methods, materials, and technology to radical procurement routes. Okay, so that's always also straightforward. It should not only be a fashion, um, but it is a way of um, look. Uh, it's a culture that uh, that one needs to cultivate. And then there's a few central themes that we're going to look at. So innovation diffuses across firms. Um, just the last thing on the introduction, um, the chosen focus here is medium-sized and typical regional-based construction firms rather than the big guns, because statistical con continue, continually demonstrate that groups of smaller firms undertake more than 80% of the sector input output. So basically the short and long is in this research and that they did is they basically looked at the bigger portion of the construction industry as a whole. Okay, so now what they found was that there's a couple of central themes um, that run through all uh, through the diffu diffusion of information, um, innovation methods, materials, and technologies, and radical procurement. Okay, we spoke about that. So the central themes are. Um, it is a core message in this uh, volume that innovation can be viewed in many different ways. In this chapter, innovation is understood not to be fixed, but um, to be readily occurring during the, fu the, the diffusion process. You have different stages. So the first stage, the notion of awareness and the role it plays in the process. The ability to become aware of innovation in the first instance is unique at all levels. Uh, levels. So you have actors, uh, project departments, firms, networks of firms, and sectoral uh, sectorial um, innovation. So, so thus, you need to actively um, search for information and educate yourself on what. Um, types of innovation there is. Okay. Thus, understanding awareness, um, who has it, and who in which firm firms have the network of firms you have embedded in important consideration. The main thing is some firms invest a lot in new innovation, but it's a risky business because not all new innovations um, can be used, so it's a lot of resources or money to pay a resource to look for innovation methods. I'm going to, um, the one thing that uh, that we did conclude is that um, information cannot diffuse in isolation. Okay, so the challenge that the uh, guys had and during this research pro 
uh, process was actually just mapping the process of how uh, information is uh, diffused between um, people and this is the couple of ne uh, networks that I'm going to show you guys now remember th this is not all the networks that's included in the um, in the books uh, or in the book um, please um, have a look that you um, uh, that you look at all of them so the fusion in networks uh, is the first one that we're going to look at so innovation diffusion networks for one actor within one firm so basically they're looking at a person which is you and then advice coming from the suppliers and uh, architects or um, innovative um, people or etc so um, or guys that's worked on pr uh, previous projects with uh, information so you can see there's a direct link uh, to you and then um, you maybe speak to um, Chris or Eva or John or um, you convey that message further to Eva and that person diffuses it into a new person and then and so I want you guys to specifically look at the red dots that we've got here is so we've got the advice that reaches you we've got a friend who also um, speaks to someone who speaks to another friend who speaks to you or you def uh, speak to a friend with uh, another friend and who speaks to that friend uh, and that information is transferred like that so you can see we're just going to follow one so for instance here you spoke to one person Okay, and he speaks to to Bruce, and Bruce now gets information from another friend from you, also, and um, and so diffuses between friends or from other people, other adv advisors. Um, maybe someone saw something on the television or on the internet of possible solutions, and it diffuses uh, like that. And just something which I want to highlight to you, for instance, here you've got your friend and you speaking to one person. So now you've got the same information reaching the same person, this Max Strong, and also that same original source of information also getting the message out to this person. So now he's getting f more information from three different um, um, sections which just um, confirms or gives that information that's being transferred more credibility so um, that's basically how it works it depends on how many people you reach how many people talks about it um, and so forth so that's more or less how it works it's, uh, it looks very confusing but it's actually something that we confronted with each day um, is the amount of um, true information that we get Okay, then um, I just want to highlight some new in, um, inventions that's on the market. Usually, the new inventions doesn't the people don't have much money, so it diffuses quite slowly here from the side. Um, but for instance, this guy um, here at this side has a lot of information or lots of resources, so he has lots of money and lots of connections, so he can easily transfer his information. Trust. And um, okay, then the other external factors that they just list here is trust. People that trust you um, will obviously um, have more. Um, you will carry more value in your advice that you give, um, and uh, to other things um, uh, than other people that do not um, have the same credibility that you have, for instance. Then something else that also plays in t a part into all of this is drivers. For instance, if you've got new innovation um, and the government suddenly says, no, we're going to drive um, green en energy, uh, we're going to um, give you a VAT rebate on new solar panels that you install, obviously that will be a driver in the industry for a new technology like solar power power also. so I think that's more or less um, uh, in a nutshell what what this um, figure represents and then the next one that I want to show you guys is the network of firms in acting on the innovation diffusion process so the previous one was individuals 
now we're looking at firms um, enacting um, information on each other. So you've got a driver, for instance, now the solar panel thing. Um, so now the architects here, they, they, they have to design greener buildings uh, and they have to get a green star rating. And so now they, and the government is pushing for uh, that solar panels to be installed. So that's the driver. And then you've got um, your trust. Um, these architects have a certain trust in certain suppliers, for instance, QuickHot, and now QuickHot also brings out their new solar panel um, heaters. So now that's trust also in acting on the architect. Socialize, now he goes to a social event and uh, this architect gets information on that solar event. So have you heard about this new uh, thing of this new solar technology that the guys are doing or installing it's much cheaper than other um, installations then he has another friend that um, gives him the same information you have inventors who gives him information okay and then he obviously f um, forms his opinion with all the information that he got from this side okay and then communication um, is how to communicate uh, this information so <coughs> so this architect obviously gives out um, gets all this information from um, from his professional team so now he's on a professional team and he needs to make a decision and now he says look I've heard about this what does what does the structural engineer say okay the structural engineer can't say much about the solar e eaters but me the mechanical and electrical um a consultant has a big influence on uh, on the decision that the uh, architect might have. So he has in the end, in the end to approve what the uh, the architect um, says. So this is now um, how the information flows back and forth between networks and firms. Hi, uh, students. Uh, then the um, figure three. Um, in your study or in your handbook i just quickly want to discuss as well um it's a little bit different than uh, 8.2 but with the main difference it's it's a little bit more complex so this is another way that um, communication of information or transfer of information can take place so you've got your uh, opinions and your trust uh, and your connections it's just showing a little bit more complexity um, so this is another scenario or uh, way of innovation diffusion that you can find in the industry. So you will have, um, uh, it illustrates a more complex innovative diffusion network between the firms, like the previous network um, of 8.2. Uh, this network presents one firm with, within a group of firms engaged on one particular project. Okay, so it means that on a project you may have different types of firms actually in, in acting on the information transfer. Then the key point regarding this uh, figure is that there are more uh, connections and far stronger connections uh, with stakeholders outside of the firm than actually within it. And that um, sometimes happens with if you're working for a large firm um, that um, not necessarily everyone is located in one location. So, uh, for instance, one will have a branch in Bloemfontein, um, but uh, so thus the consultant, like the electrical consultant, might be also from Bloemfontein, which is not in the firm, although the firm does has internal electrical engineers, but they may sit in another place like Pretoria or uh, Cape Town or wherever and thus you have a stronger connection with the local um, external um, so, uh, service provider than actually the, the internal one. So this is basically what this uh, figure um, illustrates and then also um, and then also in the next um, uh, figure, figure 8.4 just basically illustrates a, a stagnant um, type of um, arrangements where um, the guys it's usually the older firms that have their set of um, um, people and there's a, a large amount of trust within those guys so they're usually not open for new technology or new innovative 
um, way of thinking. They want to get the job done and want to get it right. Um, it's almost they're set in their ways and they know that it works. So it's um, and this is the other scenario that's given. Uh, so um, yeah, please take note of this um, figure as well that explains this relationship. I mean, then we um, skip um, network diagrams 8.3, net, uh, network figure 8.3 is network of firms enacting the innovation diffusion process. Um, I just continued, it gives you a bit more perspective, so I want you guys to actually go through, uh, through that for me. And um, then 8.4 is also network firms enacting. Uh, the innovation diffusion process. So it just looks at other um, enactors of of diffusion. So I want you guys to to have a look at that for me as well. And um, the important one that I want you guys to have a look at is your network of firms, um, your innovation diffusion within one firm. So this is now a combination of those two um, networks. Um, basically, um, in the broader environment, uh, in built environment. So, um, firstly, you have your network of firms. That's the one that we, that we just looked at. And then we've got the one actor. And then there's some information that's uh, transfer from one person to another. And this person might be an actor in one of these firms that uh, that we've got here so we've got a project manager communication manager etc okay so uh, this is basically the interaction between them and then you've got the network of firms enacting on each other then you've got peer pressure uh, what does my friend say my friend they used this new thing but they they classified as this a new innovative company and why aren't we getting um, um, more innovation out there so that's why um, this peer pressures and um, an all incompetent um, item within innovation diffusion and then you've got the broader um, institutional forces that enacts um, on on this that's not the government for instance promoting solar panel heating also okay so um, I want you guys to be able to list um, uh, these items negotiate the space contextualize um, thresholds and then you've got uh, your group link between the different items that's not the link that I spoke about here going through there power how much power does um, a person have and then se selective exposure, which plays a big role, is um, what type of conferences are you attending? What type of courses are you attending? Um, are you actively looking for new innovative uh, information diffusion? Okay, and then obviously the actors that um, impose um, diffusion um, on, um, on a firm and on the industry. <coughs> and then we've got the notion of needs. The notion of needs is perspective. That's the public interest, the public um, narrative. For instance, um, if you look at cars a while back, the bigger the engine, the more power it had, the more, um, um, or, or that was the um, the driving force behind uh, car development. Nowadays, it's being efficient, being um, having the um, the car that can get the most out of every ounce or every drop of petrol or diesel um, from out of car. So the notion of needs is the public um, driver or interest. Okay, so just to close off, you guys will have to be able to, um, to draw this little diagram and explain to me what the um, negotiations of space is, the con contextual threshold, the group um, group think of how uh, this network uh, or group actually influences um, individual actors or friends and communication. So um, this is quite important that you guys know this diagram and be able to draw this diagram.
but don't worry too much about the the extensive connections there okay um guys so that's more or less um uh, the slide and that's what we've got ahead uh for this week so thank you